Hello and welcome to a new Lua tutorial, where in the last episode I did not do any Lua. We took a look over the editor and uh, see what that had to offer, and now we're going to dive in into uh, Lua, but aren't going to write much code yet, because this is the part where I explain how stuff works. So, you have two options here, level local and level global. Those are both Luna.Lua files. You, if you have written Luna.Lua uh, Luna in the past, you might have noticed that we kept saying, no, this isn't right, because in beta 3 this didn't work yet. Uh, now it works. So, if you click that, um, your code editor of choice will open with uh, the Luna.Lua file. Like, it's a preset, which looks kind of like this, and for some reason has two empty lines at the, at the end. Um, my editor of choice is Visual Studio Code. Uh, other people swear by um, Notepad++. It doesn't really matter which one you use, as long as you use something that is more sophisticated than Notepad, because Notepad can't even properly undo. <clears throat> which is uh, kind of frustrating if you want to write a lot of code. So, uh, before jumping in here, I want to just quickly show what's going on in the file itself, uh, in the folder. Uh, I have the my level file, uh, which is the only file I created. I haven't gone into this folder and done anything yet. Uh, the save files are stuff that is automatically generated and kept track of as you play. Progress.json is for achievement tracking uh, and is not something you should worry about. Uh, this is for Luna DLL compatibility and is also something that just kind of gets generated. And the save 0 TMP file is uh, editor save, which um, is for save data, which I will tackle in a future tutorial. And which lets you like keep track of values across runs. So, when I made the tileset in the last episode, uh, it made this folder and put the bush tileset in here, which you can see right here. Uh, they're saved as INI files in the tileset folder, uh, in the uh, level folder, and the Luna.lua file exists uh, in this folder as well. Uh, the level local one is always in the level folder, so one folder down from the level file, and the episode wide one is in this folder, because if multiple levels exist in this directory, they will all have access to it. So, let's go over the basic functions here. Uh, on start is the code that runs at the start of the level once. Uh, the first frame where stuff happens, this is where you can initialize stuff uh, late, or spawn stuff in, or take care of everything you need at the start of the level. Uh, on tick runs every frame, on event runs whenever a smabex event is called. Uh, first I want to mention that you need to always only have one of these per file, because um, this is like a, a function that is called from outside, so uh, the way it works is that uh, Luna Lua looks at your file and uh, sees, oh, there's an on start function here, I will call that. But if you have two on start functions and say miss.dialog on start one, and down here you have miss.dialog on start two, then uh, there will be two on starts in your code and you will have on start two running as the only one because the uh, latter one overrides the former one, so to speak. Because they share the same name and you can have only one thing with one name. So on start on, on one just runs now, and if you want both of these dialogues, you don't copy on start, but you have both of them like after each other in on, uh, in on start. And since the code runs from top to bottom, um, that's how it would work. Yeah, that just gave, gave me a warning because I had multiple unstarts, so that's also a good way to find out when uh, there's a problem in your code. So unstart1 and unstart2 now run in succession. Same way, uh, of course, you want all your code in onTick to uh, just be in one single onTick uh, running from top to bottom in whatever we already needed. Often not necessary, but sometimes uh, life-saving. So uh, I want to focus a little bit more on event because it's like the oddball in here, yeah, in that it doesn't just run in its own environment, but rather uh, related to some uh, Smabex internal code. So um, the way this overload works is that you don't want to replace this event name, but rather this is a variable 
which uh, contains the name uh, of the event. So you uh, can check if event name is level start, then uh, do stuff. And now when uh, level start runs, uh, you will get this event. Uh, this part inside the uh, if statement will then run, which <clears throat> isn't much more than an on start right now, but if you uh, ha hook it up to other events, you can do like uh, conditional event chains, for example. Uh, say you have uh, event name level start, and then you check if player.powerup is one, then else. Uh, let's trigger like an event that uh, shows a layer, new event one, show, uh, shows new layer, Oh, the ground storm element there. Uh, and we're gonna put a mushroom on the show layer. We're gonna hide the show layer and sh say, we wanna show that here. And then show the show layer if we are small Mario going into the level. There was our mushroom, and if we go into the test menu and uh, change the power-up to be Big Mario, then our mushroom will not show up. Just as a simple example for how an event can be used quickly to uh, make like conditional event events happen. I've uh, seen this used a lot in the past where you needed to meet like multiple conditions in order for an event to be triggered again. Uh, this is the standard setup for uh, Luna.lua and um, next time I'm going to go further in depth to uh, how variables work, what you can do with them, and uh, what maybe one or two more functions uh, that Luna Lua provides you. I hope you learned something today uh, and I'll see you next time.